Hallelujah. Oh, there's nobody like you, Jesus. Nobody like you, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Come on and give God a praise. Brother Kevin's going to come right now. Oh, Lord, you're worthy to be praised this evening. Come on, let's magnify the Lord tonight, church. We've come, God, with an expectation to see the miraculous take place. God, we've come with an expectation, God, to see the supernatural. Those of you that's still in your seats, make your way to the front. And let's begin to worship the Lord. Let's begin to cry out to God. Lord, you're worthy, God, to be praised. Lord, I expect. Lord, the supernatural, Lord, we come here, God. Lord, into your presence, God, with an expectation, God. Lord, for you to meet us here, God, we come, Lord. God, with arms lifted, God, with our hearts of praise. Lord, I pray, God, that you'll empty me of myself, God. Lord, remove every hindrance, God, in my mind, God. Clear me, God, of all the worldly things. Lord, let's pray. Let's offer God some worship in this place, God. Lord, I pray against every hindrance. God, I pray against every spirit, God, that we're trying to come against this service. God, I rebuke the power of the enemy, God. Lord, I pray against every power of hell. God, we're trying to come against this service. God, I pray and stand against everything, God. Every high place, God's got to be torn down, Lord. I pray against everything, God, the devil's going to try to do to stop what you want to do in this service. God, I pray, God, and I prophesy. God, miracles, Lord. I promise that signs and wonders will take place, God. I promise that the chains will be broken in this house. I promise that the lives will be turned around. If you see it, if you feel it, come on, let's give God some worship. Oh, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Oh, can you feel this dirt in the atmosphere? Oh, God, we want an apostolic outpouring of the Holy Ghost. will be different, God, when we come in this place, God. We don't want to see church as normal, God. We don't want to see ordinary church tonight, God, but we want to see a move, God, an apostolic upper room experience, God. We want to see an outpouring of the Holy Ghost, Lord. We want to see blind eyes open. We want to see deaf ears open. God, we want to see the lame the wall. God, I want to see God, young people, God, accept the call to the ministry. God, I pray against Everything that the enemy is going to try to do to hinder God. Lord, I pray, God, that everybody in home will come to this place with a mindset, God, that it's not about them. God, it's not about the singers. It's not about the musicians. God, but it's about giving you glory. It's about giving you praise. It's about giving you honor. Lord, you're worthy to be praised, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to be in this house. We thank you, Lord, for the privilege it is, God, to worship you in the call of the name of Jesus. There's no place I'd rather be, God, than in your presence. Lord, there's no place I'd rather be than in the presence. God, where miracles take place. God, where lives are changed in your presence, God. I know there's things and there's revivals going on all over the world, but God, here in Gates City, Virginia, places only nobody's ever known about, God, we want to see an outpouring of the Holy we want to see a revival kind of souls. Lord, those that are hungry, God, bring them in. Lord, your word declares, God, that you will fill those that are hungry, God, that hunger and thirst after rising slow. You declare they're going to be filled. Oh, if I've got some apostolic young people that are hungry for an outpouring of the Holy Ghost, can we take them out of their head?
that he's delivered you, if you know that he saved you, if he know, you know that he's broken every chain of sin, I wish for 30 seconds right now, somebody in this room would give God praise that he is worthy of. If I could get my flesh out of the way for about 30 seconds, if I could get myself out of the way for about 30 seconds, God wants to do something in this house. Come on, I want you to push until you speak in tongues. I want you to push until a shout gets in your feet. Come on, that's it. Come on, that's it. Somebody dig a little air under your feet and say, he's been too good for me. He's been too good to me. He's been too good to me. Come on, let's do it one more time. He's worthy. He's worthy. I know this is Jesus. His name 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 is Jesus. Here's what God wants to do tonight. There is no end and there is no beginning to our God. Yes. He will give you as much of Him as you want. But you have got to be willing to make the sacrifice and say, God, I'll sacrifice you in praise. I'll sacrifice you in worship. I will give you everything of me. And tonight, tonight, God will destroy the yoke. Yes, he will. Tonight, God will break the chain. Say, God, I want it, God. I want it, Jesus. Man, the presence of the Lord is here. If you're waiting on what happens next, this is it. We press and we push and we worship until we can feel the presence of God. And when the presence of God shows up, I'm telling you, anything can happen. 
is still a God of miracles. He is still a God of healing. He is still pouring out his spirit. And tonight, God is going to manifest himself in this room. And if we will get out of the way, if this fleshly body will get out of the way and let the spirit take over, we will see a manifestation of his presence that we have not seen before and we have not experienced before. But I have to make up in my mind that I am going to get out of the way and see what God will do. I want to say thank you for your worship. If you can make your way back to your seats just for a moment. I kind of hate to do that, but I feel an unction of the Holy Ghost here tonight. And probably many of you have been to conferences and you've been to youth rallies and youth revivals and you have experienced the touch of God. You've experienced him touch you, much like when Elijah came to Elisha and he was going to transfer his mantle. He came to Elisha and the Bible says that he brushed him with his mantle. But until Elisha had determined that he was going to go home that night and he was going to kill the oxen that he used to plow with, and he was going to burn the plow that he used all of his life. And in essence, he was going to say, I'm going to burn the ship that got me here. I'm going to throw air to the wind and I am going to pursue holy after you, God. And when that happened, the Bible says that not many days hence that when Elijah went up into a whirlwind, that Elisha was there to catch that mantle. He went from a brushing of the mantle to wearing the mantle when he made up in his mind that it is not worth anything in this world for me to lose the anointing of God that has brushed me. The brush of the Holy Ghost, it persuaded him to believe that I just can't have a brush. I want to wear the anointing. I want to wear the mantle. And that's what God wants to do here tonight. He wants you to leave here with an experience that will make you pursue after the mantle. And if we will give ourselves to God tonight, he will do that. And I want to say thank you so much to everyone who's made the trip. Tonight we have people from Kentucky and North Carolina and Virginia and Tennessee. If all of our home folks would, I want us to give a hand clap of appreciation to everyone that's here. Hey, I don't take it lightly. I've been a youth pastor for five years and every year it gets harder to go on long trips and then make it back home alive. So I, I understand. So thank you so much for coming. If our ushers will go ahead and make their way to the front, we're going to receive our offering tonight. I found no biblical way to receive a financial blessing from God except through the act of giving. Our pastor preached the message on Sunday talking about offerings with no sacrifice. And he spoke about the widow woman who had just a little bit of oil and a little bit of meal. And the prophet comes to her house and he asks for some water and something to eat. And the water was something that she could give freely because she had an abundance of it. But when he asked for her to bake a cake for him instead of her and her son, it was a sacrifice because there was not much meal and much oil left. And because of her sacrifice, we all know the story that every time she went back to that meal, it was replenished. And I believe tonight, I know that this is not your home church and I know it may feel a little different than what it typically does to be able to give in this offering, but I ask you to sow into a field of sacrifice. We've got Brother David Jennings here with us tonight. Man, what an incredible worship leader. Let's give him a hand. 
told me something last night. He said, I know when you called me, you didn't call me to be the best singer. You, you called me to have church. I would say you're among the top of the best singers, brother. And you are anointed and we are having church. We have Brother Caleb Herring with us this week from Bogalusa, Louisiana. Man, God's going to use him in a miraculous way. But I want you to bless the men of God that are here tonight. I want you to give an offering out of your sacrifice and see how God will bless you. See how God will return that. If you would, all of our ushers, if you begin to serve the congregation as they're serving you, I want to make just a couple of announcements. We will tomorrow night be having an after event uh, in the fellowship hall immediately following the service. We'll be having a, a four on four volleyball tournament. We'll be having a three on three basketball tournament. And if you're like me and you've retired from all of that and you just want to hang out, we're going to have a we're going to have a hangout for you two here in the fellowship hall. We're going to have karaoke. We're going to have a coffee bar. We're going to have a lot of cool things happening tomorrow night. And if they will right now, post it on the screen. This is a time if you want to come to the afterburner tomorrow night, get out your phone real quick. Get out your phone real quick. If you can open up your camera and just take a picture of that QR code right there, that will take you to a registration screen to our church website where you can go online and you can register and you can be a part of that tomorrow night. It's $10 and that will cover all of your food and your drinks. And it'll cover all the entertainment that's there. So real quickly, if you'll pull out your phone and do that. And also, if you're here tonight and you want the opportunity to give and maybe you didn't bring cash with you, if you'll flash the other slide on the screen, we do have the capability you can give online through text or another QR code for that. But now that we've got that out of the way, if you would, I want you to stand with me one more time. When Jesus came to the room of Jairus' daughter, they said she's dead. And Jesus comes into the room. All hope is gone because life has left her body. And Jesus steps into the room. The Bible says that he looks around the room and there's people there and I'm sure that some were looking at him wide-eyed thinking what in the world is this man doing he tells those that don't have faith to to get out and I can imagine those people that are standing on the outside of the room when they begin to hear the cry of a young girl they begin to hear the sounds of life entering back into her body but they are on the outside of the room but tonight the presence of God is in this room we've already felt it we've already experienced it and if we can have the faith to believe that God can meet me here in my situation tonight and I have enough faith to stay in the room. I believe that God is going to work in the miraculous right now. All across this room, I want you to raise your hands. And I want you to begin to pray a prayer of faith for yourself. I want you to begin to pray, God, increase my faith. God, increase my faith. Let me take the limitations off of what you will do tonight. Come on, I want you to raise your hands and I want you to lift your voice right now loud enough that your neighbor can hear you. And I want you to begin to prophesy to some situations that are in your life. Begin to prophesy into this room signs and miracles and wonders. And let's let God move into this room.
Darkness trembles, mountains crumble. When you draw near to us, you draw near to us. Strongholds breaking, destinies changing. When you draw near to us, you draw near to us. Would you come close to us, Jesus? In the room, in the room, in the room. Can you help me see? Don't let
moment, but I think it'd be a good idea if we just did something in this house. Before he ever comes up here, let's begin to clean house right now. Anything you walked in here with, I need you to let it go. Let it go out of your spirit. Raise your hands and surrender all across this house. The man of God has a word for us, but our hearts have to be ready to receive it. Make your heart ready to receive it tonight. If you're filled with the Holy Ghost, you want to speak in tongues. If you're called the Holy Ghost, you want to push yourself out of the way. Push your flesh out of the way. And step into the supernatural. Step into the supernatural. Come on, that's it. You're not there yet, but we're getting there. Come on, step in, step in, step in. Step in, step in. We can lift our hands and close our eyes and without any music let's just lift our voices and let's entertain what we feel in this house can we do that come on just the voices of the people just your hunger just your desperation
Yala boho shandala bahaka tala boho shakahata. Yala bo shayata yala bo Praise God. Let's clap our hands under the Lord all over the house. Why don't you high five somebody on your way back to your seat? Tell them you're glad to see them at Ignite Youth Conference 2023. Praise God. Praise God. What a delight it is to be here uh, in Gate City, Virginia. I've heard so many great things about this church. And uh, its reputation precedes it. So many great things about this youth conference. And as well, its reputation precedes it. And I think it would be fitting if we gave Pastor Grizzle uh, and this host church a big hand and thank them for opening up their facility. Amen. Give honor to Pastor Grizzle and his wonderful family. Uh, 40 years he's been here, 40 years, and uh, my, how the Lord has blessed them here in Gate City. I give them great honor, and of course, it is good to be with my friend, Brother Shane McCracken and his wife. Let's give Brother McCracken and his family a big hand. I love you, man. I appreciate you. And now we can say from coast to coast, from Colorado to Virginia, uh, Brother David Jennings and I have been teamed up together, and it's always good to be with him. We're missing Bethany and Onyx, uh, but they're here with us in spirit. We love them. Didn't this praise team do an outstanding job? What a wonderful job. Amen. Brother Ferguson, just I, I already started naming names. I need to quit, but uh, it is such a delight to be here. And I'm of the persuasion that we're here, we might as well just go ahead and have church. So if you would stand with me, I want to go to Ezekiel 47, Ezekiel 47. Good to see Sister Bounds and the family here tonight. Love and appreciate them. <clears throat> Ezekiel 47, before I read my text, I want to say um, that I've been doing this long enough to know, and I'm trying to be careful here. Please don't misunderstand what I'm about to say. This is not meant as a rebuke, so be at ease in Zion. Um, but uh, I've, I've been doing this long enough to know Sometimes when you come to a youth meeting, by virtue of its name, sometimes the adults come and they just pull back and say, well, this is for the youth. Um, but tonight I'm preaching to everybody. I'm preaching to everybody. I'm preaching to myself. I'm preaching to the media. I'm preaching to the musicians. I'm preaching to the preachers. I'm preaching to the singers. I'm preaching to the new convert. I'm preaching to the seasoned saint, I'm preaching to the youth, and I'm preaching to the elder. Amen. So since I'm preaching to everybody, hopefully everybody will help me. Anybody come to help me preach tonight? All of the ministry that is here, God bless you. Uh, we give you honor today. Amen. Ezekiel 47, and let's begin reading in verse number 3. Ezekiel 47 and verse 3. The Bible said, And when the man that had the line in his hand went forth eastward, he measured a thousand cubits, and he brought me through the waters, and the waters were to the ankles. And he measured a thousand and brought me through the waters, and the waters were to the knees. Everybody say, Deeper. 
Again, he measured a thousand and brought me through the waters, and the waters were to the loins. Everybody say deeper. Afterward, he measured a thousand, and it was a river that I could not pass over. For the waters were risen, waters to swim in, a river that could not be passed over. Somebody say deeper, deeper. It's what I want to preach to you tonight. One word, but we're going somewhere here tonight. If you'll plug in and go with me deeper, deeper. I believe we need to draw a line in this generation. Um, and the reason that I'm saying this is because I know what I come from. I come from a small town, a lot like Gate City, Virginia. And I don't come from a lineage of preachers. I come from a broken home, and I was probably the least expected to ever do anything for God, those that knew me in my younger years. But one thing I did have, and it's by the grace of God that I had it, it was hunger. I've often said that God's no respecter of persons, but he is a respecter of hunger. He's no respecter of persons, but he is a respecter of hunger. I think we need to draw a line of differentiation in this generation because I hear a lot of talk about I want it, I want it, I want it. But there's a difference in want and hunger because when you want something, that means you desire it, but you can live without it. But when you're hungry for something, that means you've gone beyond the dimension of just wanting it. When you're hungry for something, it's a matter of survival. When you're hungry for something, that means if you don't get it, you can't live without it. And when it comes to the things of God, I don't just want it, I'm hungry for it. It's not something that's optional for me. If I don't have it, I cannot live without it. I cannot live without it. You know what I feel right now? I, I didn't plan on doing this, but I just, I just felt the prompting in the Holy Ghost. I know some of you don't know me. I'm, I'm, not here to, I'm not here to sermonize. I'm just here to flow and go where God wants to take us. But I, I, I feel very strongly right now because I... I've, I still feel like we've got some things that we're, we've got to push through. We've got to push beyond some, some flesh that we've, we've still got to get out of the way. So here, before we move any further, I'm asking every hand to be raised, every eye to be closed. And I want you to lift your voice, and I want us to repent before we move any further. Let's, let's get flesh out of the way. Anything that could stand in the way of what the Holy Ghost wants in this service. Come on, would you lift your voice? Let's, let's just, let's get us out of the way. Let's get flesh out of the way. Come on, you don't need to be bashful. It's all right. We're apostolic. Would you lift your voice? Would you, would you raise the volume in this room? Come on, go beyond the dimension of just wanting it. You don't just want it. You got to be hungry for it. Come on, it's a matter of survival. Come on, ask God to get every unclean thing. God, we repent of everything we thought. We repent of everything we've said. We repent of every action. We repent of everything that we've done. God, we ask you right now to kill our flesh. Lord, crucify this flesh. Get it out of the way. Come on, let's raise our voices in this house. Let's push here for a moment.
Now I wonder if for the next few moments you could just lift those hands again and lift your voice and pray. Come on, somebody pray in the Holy Ghost. If you have the Holy Ghost, I want you to pray until you pray in the Holy Ghost. Come on, we don't need to wait until tomorrow night to get where we need to go. Amen. Now, I wonder if we can clap our hands unto the Lord all over the house. Amen. Amen. Somebody shout, praise the Lord. God bless you. You can be seated tonight. Isaiah 9 and 6 is a very familiar passage of Scripture. It said, for unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. It goes on to say that of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Those words... The latter part of that verse, no end, are very important words because when the writer used the words no end, that lets me know that when God started this kingdom, he had no intentions on ever ending this kingdom. Paul is writing to the New Testament in the New Testament and he says, now unto the king eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God be honor and glory forever and ever. When Paul used those words forever and ever in reference to the king, that lets us know that when God started this kingdom, he had no intentions on ever ending this kingdom. There have been a lot of kingdoms that have been built throughout the course of history. And what separates this kingdom that you and I are a part of here today from those kingdoms is those kingdoms had a beginning, but they also had an ending. But the kingdom that you and I are a part of here tonight is a kingdom that had a beginning and it has no ending. And it is not a kingdom that has remained stagnant throughout the generations. But it is a kingdom that has con continued to progress. It has continued to increase. It has continued to enlarge. And it has continued to go deeper and in this hour that we are living in God is wanting to raise up individuals that are not satisfied just visiting the flow of this kingdom on Sunday and Wednesday but he wants to raise up individuals that are hungry to live in the flow of the spirit on Monday and Tuesday and Thursday, and Friday, and Saturday. God wants to raise up individuals that are so saturated in the flow of the Spirit that they literally become one with the flow of this kingdom. So this is a flow that has a beginning, but it does not have an ending. And the greatest tool that God has given me in learning how to flow in the Holy Ghost is the tool of prayer. Just 
Stay with me. We're, we're going to go somewhere here tonight. But the greatest tool that God has ever given me in learning how to be sensitive to the Spirit is the tool of prayer. I was in a revival a few years ago, and I'd been there for eight or nine weeks at this point, and it was a Sunday morning, and I was standing on the floor, and I was getting ready to walk up on the platform and preach, and there was a young man, probably 17 or 18 years old, and he came up to me, and he said, Brother Herring, I have a question for you. He said, how do you flow in the Holy Ghost when you're preaching the way that you flow in the Holy Ghost while you're preaching? And I think he was expecting a more profound answer, but I just responded and said, I flow in the Holy Ghost when I'm preaching the same way I flow in the Holy Ghost when I'm praying. I flow in the Holy Ghost behind the pulpit the same way I flow in the Holy Ghost behind my, in my prayer closet. I know the voice of God while I'm preaching because I've become acquainted with the voice of God while I'm praying. I know what angels feel like in a church service because I've learned what angels feel like in my prayer closet. And the only way this generation is ever going to go into the deep things of God is to learn how to get acquainted with the voice of God beyond just when you're hearing your pastor preach. You've got to get acquainted with the voice of God on Monday and Tuesday and every day of the week. But I've, I've noticed something in talking to, to students in this generation is we are so emotionally driven we don't know how to be faithful without the emotion. I've had, had young men come to me in frustration, and they say, I go to prayer, and I can't weep. I can't cry. I don't feel the goosebumps. It, it, it's, my emotions are not there. What you've got to understand is that when you go to your place of prayer and your emotions are not there, that is God teaching you relationship. Because you've got to get to the place in your walk with God that you are not dependent on emotion to be faithful. But when the emotion is there and when the emotion is not there, you've still got to have devotion to Jesus Christ. And so it's, it's a flow. And if we're not careful... We can let familiarity hinder the flow. We can let what we're comfortable with get in the way of the current of the Spirit. And when it comes to prayer, we, we've gotten to this place in Pentecost where we view prayer as something that we put on a spiritual to-do list. And when we reach 60 minutes on the clock, and we've prayed our one hour a day, we mark off that box on that spiritual to-do list, and we feel good about ourselves, but the problem with that is, is that is a performance-based mindset. It says, if I can just pray my one hour a day, I've done my spiritual duty for the day. The issue with that is, is too many people mark off that box on that spiritual to-do list when they pray their one hour, and then they don't even acknowledge God the other 23 hours of the day. But when you get into the deep things of God, it doesn't matter what the hand of the clock is saying. When that one hour is up, you live with a God consciousness. You live with a God awareness. And it doesn't matter if you're driving down the road. The Holy Ghost can feel the cab of that vehicle. And he can sit in the passenger seat and you can talk with him. It doesn't matter if you're typing up spreadsheets at your job or if you're sitting in a class at your high school or at your college the Holy Ghost can nudge you and you can live with an awareness of the spirit world 
So that is the place that God is trying to take us. But if we're not careful, we can allow familiarity to get in the way of the flow. We can allow our comfort zones to get in the way of the current of the Holy Ghost. Can I tell you that when you get connected to the flow of this kingdom, it will always demand more from your life. It'll never allow you to stay where you are, but it will always call you to a deeper, to a deeper level of commitment to him. And so it is my custom I know this from experience because it is my, my custom or it was my custom uh, whenever I go home on the rare occasion that I am home to go up to my home church late at night when nobody's there and spend time in prayer. And when it comes to prayer, when you do it long enough, you realize that there are some days that you wake up You've really got to toil for it. You've really got to you've really got to dig for it. You've really got to work for it. Anybody know what I'm talking about? There are those days you go to prayer and it seems like the heavens are brass and like God is a million miles away. But then there are those other days where you can just wake up you can just send your spirit out and you can just reach out and grab the flow of the Holy Ghost. And it was one of those days I was home and I woke up and I sat on the edge of my bed and I just, just began to feel after the spirit world. And it was, it was one of those days I didn't have to work for it. I didn't have to tarry for it. I didn't have to labor for it. I could just, I could just reach out and grab the flow of the Holy Ghost. And from the moment that I woke up, I could feel God drawing me away to a place of prayer. I could feel God inviting me away to a place of relationship and communion with him. But I'll never forget it. I was so accustomed to what I was used to. And I was so comfortable to the way that I had always done it. I ignored that invitation for prayer. And all day long, I kept saying, God, I feel you drawing me. But if you'll wait until later tonight, I'm going to go up to the church. And I'm going to go into that sanctuary when nobody's there. And I'm going to spend time with you in prayer. And finally, about midnight rolled around. And I went up to the church like I had planned. And I'll never forget it. I walked into that dark sanctuary. And I began to pace back and forth. And I began to feel after him and it seemed like that flow it seemed like God had just shut off that flow of the spirit and I remember getting frustrated I said God you've been drawing me away to prayer all day I'm here now and I'm ready to pray and the Holy Ghost spoke to me and said next time I ask to speak to you let's do it on my time not yours And if we're not careful in the apostolic church, we can get to the place where we relegate the flow of the Holy Ghost to our calendar and to our schedule and to what we're used to. But can I tell this generation, God is calling us to a deeper commitment to him than we've ever had before. Uh, and there, there is a biblical principle for this. Uh, Jesus understood something about the progression of the flow of this kingdom and, and breaking the mold of what you're accustomed to and what you're used to because in Luke chapter 5, uh, the Bible said that Jesus stood on the shore and then it said that he launched out a little from the land and then finally the Bible said that he launched out into the deep and when Jesus got into the deep he looked at Simon Peter and he said Simon let 
down at your net. And Simon said, but master, we have toiled all the night. So there it is. Simon was now in the deep, but he was hung up on the way. He had always done things. But I want you to understand, when you study that, there was some error to what Peter was saying. He said, I've toiled all the night. But when you looked at other gospel accounts, you will read where Simon toiled all the night. But the Bible said that he was standing on the shore and he was casting his nets into the shallow. So yes, Simon Peter, you have toiled all the night, but you've not toiled in the deep. You've been toiling in the shallow and that's why you've not got your breakthrough. Can I preach to this generation and say that Jesus was not asking Peter to change his labor. He was asking Peter to change his level. Oh, God. He didn't ask Peter to stop doing what he'd always done. He was just saying, Peter, you've got to change the level at which you do it. Can I preach to you and say, he's not asking us to stop praying. He's not asking us to stop having church. He's not asking us to stop teaching Bible studies. Come on. He's not asking us to stop. He's just asking us to come out a little bit deeper and give more of ourselves than we've ever given. Come on, I need somebody to lift their voice in this house right now. Lift your voice and let him know, I want to go deeper than I've ever gone. And so there's a progression of the flow of this kingdom that I'm preaching to you about here today. And it will always draw you beyond the shallow. That's why in Ezekiel 47, Ezekiel said there was a man with a line in his hand. And he said that that man measured ankle deep. And then I went a little deeper and it was knee deep. And I went out deeper and it was waist deep. And then it was chest deep. Until finally Ezekiel said the water was so deep it was a river that I could not even swim in. But here's what I want this generation to understand. It was not two different flows from the shallow to the deep. It was the same flow, but it was a different level of commitment to the same flow. You want to know why some people stay in the shallow? It's because they want the emotion of the flow on Sunday, but they don't want devotion to the flow on Monday. But I believe God is awakening this, is awakening this generation, and we're saying I'm not satisfied with the move of God just on Sunday. I gotta have the right. I gotta have a move of God every day of the week. I'll tell you another reason a lot of people like to remain in the shallow. It's because when you're in the shallow, you can feel the flow, but you don't have to commit to the flow. You don't have to lose control. When you're in the shallow, you've still got your footing. You've still got control of every area of your life. And there are individuals in this room, you're afraid of the deep because you know when you get there, there's some areas of your life you're going to have to finally let God have control of. But I'm telling you, there's a generation that is saying, God, I want you to have control of every part of my life. When I say every part, I do mean every part. He wants control of your iPod. He wants control of your social media. He wants control of your finances. He wants control of who you date and who you don't date. He wants control of who your friends are. He wants control of your wardrobe. Come on, somebody. Are you desperate to give Jesus every area of your life? Come on, I'm not here to be the best preacher, but I pray God will help me be a good reacher here tonight. When you get in the deep, you've got to give every part of your life up. And the Bible said of the increase of his government and peace, that 
means when you let God have control of it, he will give you peace uh, in the area that he controls. Uh, you want to know why we've got young men and young women that don't have any peace in their life? Uh, they can't sleep at night. Uh, they're having to go to counseling and get therapy. It's because you've got too much control over areas of your life. Uh, but if you'll give it to Jesus, uh, he'll give you a peace uh, because he's got it. Come on, you ought to lift your hands in this house right now and say, I'm ready to give it all to Jesus. Ah. Huh. But when Ezekiel started describing that river, I'm going to tell you what comes along with getting connected to the deep things of God. When Ezekiel started describing that river, he said every dead thing that that river came in contact with, it came back to life. I want to preach to every youth group in this house. Your youth group is not dead. It's just got to get reconnected to the flow of the Holy Ghost. Your ministry's not dead. Your future's not dead. Dead. Your dream is not dead. Come on, somebody. It's not dead. It's just got to get reconnected to the flow of this kingdom. I'll go a step further and say that there were dead things he never thought would live that came back to life. There's a revival you never thought you'd have that you're going to have when you get connected to the flow of this kingdom. There's miracles you can see you never thought you would see. There's backsliders that'll come back you never thought would come back. There's doors that'll open in your city you never thought would open. But you got to get connected to the flow. Come on, we're breaking this thing. Let's lift our hands. I'm here to plow until something breaks in this atmosphere. I'm going to tell you why it's taken so long for us to finally break through in this atmosphere. It's because I'm in the Holy Ghost and I'm preaching to a group of people. You got to the place you were satisfied just getting into the flow on Sunday. And then you step out of the flow on Monday. And now we're having to plow and we're having to dig. And we carried a bunch of flesh into this atmosphere. But Ezekiel said at that flow, on the banks of that flow, every tree on the banks of that river, it didn't not bear fruit just a few months of the year. He said it bore fruit every month of the year. We got to get to the place that every season is revival season. Where every, come on, where every service is a revival service. You don't need to be satisfied with just getting in the flow and at night. You need to say when this conference is over, I'm going deeper. I'm Come on, we're ankle deep, but I wish somebody would get so deep with your dance, with your shout. You lose control of your shout. You lose control of your dance. We got to get beyond the shallow. We got to get beyond the surface. There are deep places to go. Let's lift our hands and let's pray. Come on. Come on, we're almost there.
one of the greatest advantages that the apostolic church has is its access to the flow of the spirit because i'm going to tell you there are a lot of movements there are a lot of groups that claim themselves to be christian but they're missing one of the most important elements and that is the access that we have to the flow of the holy ghost that's why we better never compromise this truth that we believe come on i said that's why we better never compromise uh, this truth that we believe because it is protecting the access that we have uh, to the flow of the holy ghost and i'm watching a spirit that's been moving in among this generation uh, that's saying if you'll just compromise a few things uh, you'll be able to grow a larger crowd uh, but can i tell you jesus uh, is not worried about a crowd uh, he's worried about a bride You say, well, how does that tie in to going deeper? I'll tell you how, because in Judges chapter 12, when there was a line being drawn between Gilead and the Ephraimites, they captured the flow. They captured the passages at Jordan. And Gilead said, if any man approaches this flow, we got to make him say Shibboleth. And there were some Ephraimites that came to the flow, and they could not say Shibboleth. They said Shibboleth. They only removed one letter from the word and it denied them access to the flow and there's a spirit in this generation that's saying if we can just move one letter if we can just compromise one thing if we just let down on holiness if we just change how we look on the outside we'll get a bigger crowd can i tell you we're worried about the crowd but god's worried about the current he's worried there ought to be a generation that shouts right now that says we want the flow we won't we're not worried about the crowd we just want the flow of the spirit Well, it's just one letter. It's just one letter. Not a big deal. Let's just move the line a little bit. All the while, the Holy Ghost is screaming to this generation. If you want to keep having access to the flow, you better guard every letter of this thing. Brother Jennings, it goes all the way back to Genesis 26. Isaac could have dug a well anywhere. But what did he do? He dug a well at Gerar. You know why he did that? Because he knew my father was looking for something here. My father dug some wells here. And when I could pack up and go do my own thing, I got to go back to where my father dug those wells. But the Bible said that the Philistines had filled them, had filled those wells with flesh. You know what flesh and the Philistines are a type of? Or, or they filled the, the wells with earth. You know what earth and the Philistines are a type of in Scripture? It's a type of the flesh. If we are ever going to get access to the wells that our fathers have dug, we've got to make sure we don't try to dig our own wells and do our own thing. We've got to get the flesh out of the way, and then you'll access a deeper place in God than you've ever gone before. You want to know what old wells God is going to help this generation redig? It's the old well of prayer. It's the, my God, I wish I had some help right now. It's the old well of fasting. It's the old well of separation from the world. Well, I feel my help in this house right now. Whenever Isaac redug those old wells, the Bible said that he found there a springing water. When he went back to the old wells, he found a flow that his father did not find. Let me prophesy out of this.
this generation, when we remove the flesh from our father's wells, we're going to see a revival that no generation ever saw. Barnes prophesied before he died, old prophet from Louisiana, prophesied before he died. And in the end time, he said, God and the church, they're going to be moving along side by side just like this. They're going to be moving alongside just like this. And he said, all of a sudden, the Holy Ghost is going to make a turn. God's going to make a sharp turn. And those that are satisfied with just having good church as usual, he said, they're not going to be sensitive enough to know uh, that there's been a shift in the spirit. And he said, they're, not, they're going to keep on going. Uh, and God's just going to let them have good church. Uh, but then he said, there's another group. Uh, they're going to be sensitive to the shift. Uh, and they're going to go where God wants to lead them. We cannot be satisfied with just church as usual. I want to know where the miracle's at, where the angel's at. Come on, it's starting to break in this house. I don't want to miss what God's doing in this end time hour because I'm comfortable. I say let's go deeper than we've ever gone before. That's it. It just settled in this house. Lift your hands. I'm telling you, there's a line being drawn in this house right now. Listen to me for a moment. There's a line being drawn in this house right now. There's a line being drawn. This is where it's at right here. This is where it's at. Because in Numbers 32, when Moses was trying to lead the children of Israel to a place they'd never been. The Bible said that there were two and a half tribes that looked at their leadership and said, The land that we have is good for cattle. And conveniently enough, we have cattle. And they had an opportunity to cross the flow and possess what they had never possessed. They were too hung up on maintaining what they've always had. And I want this generation to understand God will let you keep what you have if that's all you want. But he's calling you deeper, deeper. Deeper. Do you really just want to spend one hour in prayer a day and mark off your spiritual to do list? Or do you want to get to the place where you learn? Where you learn how to linger. wait until you can literally feel him get off of his throne I know what it's like I'm telling you the greatest moves of God 
that I've ever been in haven't been in a crowd. It's been when I forgot about the clock. And I tapped into that dimension of hunger. Where I said, God, I cannot make it. If you don't give me more. God let them stay on the wrong side of the flow. One of those tribes was Gad. When you get into the New Testament, Jesus steps onto the shore of the Gadarenes. And there's a man possessed with legion of devils that comes to Jesus. And so the revelation and being satisfied and being comfortable is that uncommitted saints will eventually entertain unclean spirits. You think you're just maintaining, but what those two and a half tribes didn't realize is that by their decision not to go deeper and not to go to the flow where God was trying to lead them, is it bordered them closer to the enemy than any of the other nine and a half tribes that went to the place that God was calling them. I am telling a young person in this house, the reason that God is calling you deeper, the reason that God is asking for more commitment, for more hunger, for more desire for him in your life is because he knows if you stay where you are, there's going to come a moment you open the door to entertain something you shouldn't entertain. telling you I'm reaching for somebody in this house right now. You've gotten tired of just coming in and going through the motions. Boy, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. And you've gotten to the place your emotions are numb. You come in on Sunday and Wednesday and you don't know how to cry. You don't know how to weep. You don't feel God anymore. I'm telling you it's because you're too close to the enemy. But if you get hungry for deeper, if you get hungry for more, God's saying I'll open up those tear ducts and you can cry tears like you've never cried in my presence let's lift our hands let's pray let's pray the Holy Ghost is reaching the Holy Ghost is reaching for somebody A lot of what we've been battling in this service, a lot of what we've been plowing against in this service, the Lord spoke to me and said it's condemnation. There's a Samaritan woman at a well, and you're thirsty. Jesus said, give me something to drink, and she looked at him and said, watch this. She looked at him, and she said, the well is deep. And you have nothing to draw with. I started studying that word deep, and there's a few different translations. But one of the definitions that stood out to me, Brother McCracken, was it meant time. What she was saying was, is it'll take too long to get to the deep end of this well? to satisfy my thirst. It would take too long. She had had five husbands and was living with one she wasn't married to. And a lot of you in this house, you're so hungry to go to deeper places in God that you feel like you've wasted too much time. There's a lie from the enemy saying it will take you way too long. It will take you way too long. David said, deep calleth unto deep. He was talking about that secret place. The only way to access the deep 
is with the deep. David was saying, there is a place in me. It's a deep place. Nobody knows exactly how hungry I am. And it's longing for more of him. It doesn't matter how much time you've wasted. Jesus is saying, I can give you access to the deep. But he's no respecter of persons. He's a respecter of hunger. And what's happening in this service, and I'm done. Let's all stand. I'm done. What's happening in this service is destiny is passing by some of you. We're at a place of transition in the kingdom. Where giftings and anointings are shifting from that elder generation to this generation. And it is amazing to me that a lot of times throughout the nation of Israel, in the history of the nation of Israel in the Old Testament, when they came to a place of transition, God brought them to the flow. He'd bring them to the flow to signify there's about to be a transition. And the one that stands out to me the most is Elijah and Elisha. You with me here tonight? One that stands out to me, and this is the one I want to drive home, and I'm going to leave you with this. It's Elijah and Elisha. They came to that flow, and it was time for transition. But Elisha would have never gotten to that flow of transition had he not, like you said, burned the plow and killed the ox when destiny passed by him. Because here's what you have to understand about destiny is destiny doesn't wait. Destiny doesn't wait. It just visits you and keeps going. It doesn't turn around to see if you're going to come along for the journey. And I'll never forget, I'll never forget, 15 years old, backslidden away from God, on my way home from basketball practice. I'll never forget it. Driving illegally, got into a car accident. Had a cast on my shooting hand for the entire summer. In that summer, I couldn't play summer league ball. And God called me to preach. I'll never forget it. I'll never forget it, Brother Sawyer. I felt that destiny, that mantle. It just brushed me. And it kept on going. And it didn't turn around to see if I was going to come along for the journey. But I followed it because I wasn't satisfied with what I had. I wanted more. I went to my high school basketball coach and I said, I quit. I'm done. I don't want to miss any more church. God's calling me to preach. I don't want to miss choir practice. I don't want to miss prayer meeting. I don't want to miss anything. I don't want to miss youth camp for summer league. Nothing. I don't want to miss and what's happening in this service is God's calling you deeper, but destiny, it's just brushing you. It's just, it's just, it's just seeing, do you really, are you really hungry for it? Or are you just going to stay where you are? There's a ministry for you. You hear me in this house? There's a ministry for you. Destiny's not going to wait around. Finally, when it came to that flow, Elisha said, Everything I've left behind, it's worth it. It's worth it. Because if we want the last generation's fruit, we got to get connected to the last generation's flow. Where's the next T.W. Barnes? Where's the next Cody Martins? Where's the next Aaron Lambs? Where's the next Nona Freeman? Oh, I feel destiny in this room. He came to that flow and he 
God's sake. I don't just want it, I'm hungry for it. Finally, that mantle that brushed him. There you go. Thank you for responding, sis. This altar's open. When God sees that you can handle the brush of the mantle, He knows I can trust you with the burden of the mantle. God's calling you deeper. This altar's open. I wish you'd make your way out of your seat and run to this altar. If you want to stay where you are, God will let you. He'll let you. It's up to you. But there's deeper. There's deeper. There's more. The angelic is available for you. Dreams and visions are available for you. Miracle signs and wonders are available for you. You hear me in this house? Hey, elder. In the sunset years of your life, there's still more for you. Sawyer, there's more. Brother Jennings, there's more. Now I'm asking the rest of you, elders, I'm everybody, if you're hungry, this altar's open. Would you make your way out of your seat? Come on, mom and dad. Come on, mom and dad. There's giftings, there's anointings for you. All over the house, you got to learn how to lay on your face and linger. Come on, let's forget about the clock. Destiny is visiting you. Destiny's passing by you right now. Come on, come on. Come on, young lady, travail. You ought to pray until you intercede. Lift your voice. They're going to sing, but I want you to lift your voice all over the house. I'm challenging a young man to find a place to pray. I'm challenging a young lady to find a place to pray. Come on, there's deeper. Let's get beyond the shallow here tonight. Let's pray until we lose control. Go! Lift your voice. Come on, that's it. Press. Press. Wait out deeper. Wait out deeper. Come on, don't wait on the music to drown you out. You got to let God know I'm hungry. I can't live without this it. World Come on, lift your voice. Lift your voice. Longing when all is lost and hope is dry, all I feel is cold. I'm coming back to your breath. I'm coming back to your breath. This world could never satisfy. Longing hands when all is lost and
into deep. There is that hidden hunger in you that is reaching out to those secret places in the spirit. Now that you've got to that place, for just a moment, without the music, I want you to lift your voice and reach down into that gut and let out a cry in this house. Come on. This is where God marks young men. This is where God marks young ladies. Come on. Reach down deep. Let deep cry in this house. Let deep cry in this house. Come on. It's a matter of survival.
some of you to begin to press in the Holy Ghost. Some of you are already in that vein right now, but God wants some of you to press into his presence. He wants you to go deeper. He wants you to go even deeper now. When Elisha burnt the plow, when he killed the oxen, it wasn't a quick process. It was a long process. A plow doesn't burn in minutes. It takes hours. I want you to get lost in God's presence. I want you to get lost in God's presence to where you don't care what time it is. You don't care who's around you, but you're hungry, but you're desperate. Come on, I challenge you right now. God's looking for somebody. He's searching this room right now saying, who is desperate? Who is hungry? Who is willing? Who will chase after me? Who will burn the plow? Who will kill the oxen? Come on, I want you to press even deeper right now. Come on, press it, no matter how long you stay here. God is ministering. God is taking somebody to a new dimension right now.
If you feel the Spirit leading you to pray, I want to encourage you to keep praying right now. But if you need to leave, we understand you're dismissed in the fear of the Lord. Be here tomorrow night at 7.15. God's going to show up in this house.